Us. It's great. We're just saying Tom Carriage is a kind face. Isn't you he? love Anne Ryland. Yeah, Anne yeah. yeah. Ryland's very kind yeah. face. All the other men in your life are kind faces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good luck with that conversation. A really good luck. <laughs> <laughs> is this a kind face? You get so this jealous. Yeah, you've got a jealous. lovely face, Craig. All right. Thanks very much. <laughs> Is it kind, though? It's kind and lovely and it's really nice and I love you being my co-host. Should, we, do, should yeah, we get on the show? Should. Let me just get closer and just invade your space. Uh, now, over the decades, all sorts of strange and ghostly goings-on have baffled the general public and investigators alike. In a brand new series, Giles Bramwith has delved into Britain's most unexplained mysteries. Welcome to Unexplained Mysteries with me, your Grandmaster of Ghoulishness, <laughs> Giles Brandreth. I've always harbored a fascination for the unusual, and it seems I'm not alone. From floating spectres to a shocking discovery, we're taking on a right royal haunting as we navigate the spiritual world of Hampton Court Palace. The former royal residence is most closely associated with the larger-than-life Tudor monarch, Henry VIII. Palace host Errol Clayton is on his way to the most haunted part of the palace to tell us more. Errol? The Haunted Gallery is perhaps one of the most haunted corridors in all of England. The story goes Henry VIII was presented with a letter, proof that his fifth queen, Catherine Howard, had committed treason against him. Catherine Howard was taken from the Great Watching Chamber and brought to the Privy Council Chamber where she was interrogated for three hours. She was then removed to her rooms. At some point, she broke free from her room, came running up this gallery, stopping outside that door. She felt sure if she could just see the king to throw herself at his mercy, that perhaps he would show some leniency. She was removed to the Tower of London where eventually her head was cut off. In the years following, two ladies were given rooms and it wasn't long before they started complaining about footsteps going up and down the gallery, noises at night. One lady said that she opened her door and saw a skeletal hand coming round the curtain, wearing a ring that once belonged to Catherine Howard. Another opened her door one evening to see a lady, all in white, a specter. She runs screaming down this gallery, stopping outside that door. Many people who've walked down this gallery have felt a real chill, a sense of uneasiness. In fact, more people have fainted at Hampton Court underneath this chandelier than anywhere else in the palace. And on one occasion, an assistance dog refused to pass this doorway. Well, that settles it. We all know dogs can sense things that we can't, so there must be something going on. To be treasured, then executed, really is a sorry state of affairs. Footsteps and bangs might be explained away by drafts and a wild imagination. But how about a staircase that creaks with no one on it? These stairs are haunted by the ghost of Jane Seymour, the third wife of Henry VIII. In the room directly above us is where Jane Seymour gave birth to the king's long-awaited son. And it's in that room, less than a fortnight later, that she died. Now, her body was removed and taken to Windsor, but it's said that the king commanded her heart to be buried here, under the altar of the chapel at Hampton Court. If you're here on the anniversary of Jane's death, it's said that you will see a woman in white, a white spectre holding a candle. Perhaps this is the ghost of Jane Seymour looking for her son, or perhaps she is looking for her heart. Well, if that's not enough to give you goosebumps, I don't know what will. It seems bedroom noises and apparitions are not the only curiosities of the palace. Those who dare to look close enough may be rewarded with a glimpse of witchcraft. In Tudor England, and even dating back farther, there are many kind of charms you could make. One in particular was called a hand of glory. This was the left hand of a murderer that had been cut off and then imbued with 
the magical forces. It was said that if you walked up to any locked door with a hand of glory, the door would just swing open. It would also give off a blue flame. And if anyone saw you with the hand of glory, they would suddenly just faint. They would go into a sleepless trance or they were probably just horrified that you were walking towards them with a hand that was on fire, that was severed. I don't think I'd like to come across a hand of glory in the middle of the night. As a result of these inexplicable events, the building now finds itself catapulted onto Britain's most haunted list. If walls could talk, we could shed light on the truth of these ghostly goings on. Alas, with the absence of physical evidence, it seems Hampton Court Palace is destined to retain her secrets for a long time yet. I like to think that perhaps all those people who claim ghosts don't exist are just afraid to admit that they do. Join me next time for another unexplained, unexplained. mystery. Oh! Oh, Giles, terrifying. He can't do spooky, can yeah, he? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a little bit camp, which is why I love it. <laughs> it's brilliant. Spooky. Yeah. Um, now, let's.